In this update, we've got Hurricane Lee looks to be a massive storm, but where is it going? We're going to be answering that question in this update, but we've got a lot of record heat to contend with for another couple of days, but we got significant changes on the table heading in the next week. So let's look at the satellite picture, and there is what now Tropical Storm Lee expected to rapidly intensify into a major hurricane if not a category four or five hurricane that it's the remnants of idelia up here by nova scotia there's also another hurricane out there in the eastern pacific luckily this will continue westbound and not affect anybody but in the middle of the country we do have a kind of a weak frontal boundary today that's going to be kicking off some showers and thunderstorms and the main impact with this is going to be some strong downburst winds with this type of setup so be on the lookout for areas and portions of wisconsin into ohio today that goes down onto you know kentucky tennessee all the way through mississippi and alabama i think this actually does extend into uh, louisiana and actually even portions of north texas i think they were probably going to be upgrading this uh throughout the day so if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns hit the subscribe button and you're in you get all my daily content on this channel and i would love to reach 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year and you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following my daily updates so let's take a look at the breakdown on the latest from tropical storm lee it is now a 65 mile per hour tropical storm it's moving west northwest bound but wow look at the guidance from the national hurricane center folks very bullish i mean you very rarely see this intensity kind of right off the gate here this is expected to be a, a major hurricane just two days from now but then continuing to intensify luckily the latest cone actually keeps it north of the islands and hopefully it does actually keep it north of puerto rico but it's going to be a dangerous storm folks this is a 150 mile per hour major hurricane four or five hurricane by day five and we've got a long time to track this storm so we're going to be talking about the different scenarios that could unfold with lee so but right now we've got some record heat to contend with in fact another probably 32 record high temperatures much of the south continues to be baked under that ridge of high pressure as well as into the northeast i mean very rare to see these high temperatures this late in the season but nonetheless i mean we've got upper 90s if not close to triple digits in a good part of the northeast today but there's a little bit of a cold front right there's it's cooler across portions of the dakotas through minnesota and also a good part of the pacific northwest is definitely you know on the cooler side but overall the next five days we've still got heat to contend with for a good part of the southern plains as well as into the northeast there's the there's the trough out west that keeps them on the cooler side but there's the beginning stages of the changes that's going to be unfolding next week with a kind of a series of cold fronts that are going to be dropping down in from the Great Lakes. And that's going to continue to push further south as we get deeper into the week. But between now and then for the next five days, it's pretty dry across our western states. Not much to contend with under that cooler air mass, dry conditions, and really even the middle of the country. There's not much to contend with. You do have that little weak frontal boundary, but we're talking isolated nature. These are more downburst winds, collapsing type thunderstorms in the heat of the afternoon. But where the heavier rains are really gonna be elongated is up here in the, into the Northeast. I mean, back through Pennsylvania, back through upstate New York, getting into Vermont, New Hampshire, back into Maine. And we do have, you know, a little bit of an easterly wave down here in the Gulf of Mexico, but you know, could see some beneficial rains in the portions of Louisiana and, and Arkansas the next couple of days, but not much. I mean, it's really gonna be seeing significant changes heading into the next week because by Monday we do have finally this is the heat dome that's been kind of locked over a good part of the southwest and much of the southern plains pretty much all summer long it finally starts to retreat back into Mexico that opens the door for northwest flow and northwest flow is a cooler flow it's also a wetter flow but it's going to be bringing down kind of almost a series of cold fronts to further further south and there's the same time that's where lee will be by the time we head into your monday afternoon just kind of north of 
likely Puerto Rico by then, but the hurricane guidance is the models are pretty bullish with this system, you know, as well as the National Hurricane Center. Right now, the latest hurricane guidance, which actually was you know, three days out with ideal, yeah, it pretty much nailed that system. It only missed it by like three millibars at its peak. So that was pretty impressive with this hurricane model. And right now, five, you know, five days out, it's calling for a likely a 942 millibar low pressure, a formidable storm. And that's not the peak, folks. It's likely going to continue to deepen. 930, some some areas of 920 range. Definitely a formidable storm. It's going to have a massive eye associated with it. A lot of high wind gusts. Now, the most bullish model is this other model. It's a kind of fairly new model, but th this is the spread in some of these hurricane guidances right now. I don't think it reaches 180, and they got gust of 200 miles an hour. But nonetheless, it tells you the intensity is there. I mean, right? I mean, the, the intensity, this looks to be the strongest storm, you know, so far of the season, bigger than Franklin, bigger than Idalia. So we've got to track this storm every step of the way. And there's a little bit of uncertainty as we get in the extended range, you know, beyond seven days, which is typically kind of normal because obviously the further you go out, the spread's going to be a little bit wider, but we'll go over the different scenarios um and this update but that's the real deals next week folks we're gonna have a series of cold fronts as that ridge of high pressure starts to back off into mexico there's that northwest flow there's the cooler flow we've got those series of cold fronts as the teleconnections actually extend and kind of drop negative that allows that cooler air mass to funnel southbound so these areas east of the rockies are definitely going to be on the cooler a uh, cooler side nonetheless across the middle of the country and that fish tails down into Oklahoma parts of North Texas goes even parts of the southeast so that's going to be a welcome change with these kind of series of fronts and with the series of fronts it's going to bring some welcome rains as well so again east of the east of the Rockies is probably the most high impact areas those extend into Oklahoma likely into the panhandle of Texas getting into North Texas and there's that frontal boundary where it would likely probably be on Tuesday, push pretty much into uh, Arkansas through Missouri here, through Illinois, going back into uh, you know Indiana. There's what will be Lee, and that's, yeah, that's a formidable storm, folks. <laughs> the, the deepening low pressure on the European model right now, 931 millibars. So you can see it's definitely continuing to strengthen and we'll be watching, you know, troughs and ridges and the exact timing and the speed of the system will be the ultimate demise on where Lee would actually end up. So, but we got cooler air heading in the next week. That's for certain with cooler temperatures, welcome temperatures, actually almost 20 degree drop in a good part of the South continuing what we're gonna be experiencing the next couple of days widespread triple digits shattering record highs in some of these areas down further south but it's going to be replaced by much cooler much cooler air look at those highs into the northeast where you're just baking right now you're going to be replaced with the 60s heading into next week in the middle the middle of next week so you got a lot to look forward to uh, heading in the next week with significant changes and there's going to be some much needed rain along with it as well so even in the day on wednesday the frontal boundary continues to be locked to kind of over the same areas and you have these overrunning conditions i mean this is definitely something you haven't seen on a texas map in a long time which is green <laughs> and that is rain they've been under that heat dome for three months now so that's definitely a welcome sight further south but there's the northeast continue to be wet so the first five days you're on the wetter side and the last five days you're on the wetter side over the next 10 days as lee actually starts to possibly slow down and that will be significant in itself by because even day eight this is likely where it's going to be so we've got a long time to track lee no question about it we're gonna be talking about lee literally 10 days from now so this is gonna be a long track storm and it's all gonna be you know dependent on the the, the strengths of these troughs and the strengths of these ridges so the, the stronger the trough is, the more likelihood it's going to pick it up and take it out to sea.
if you got a strengthening ridge that's going to push it further you know further inland and then could likely get it a little bit closer to the united states so there's the two scenarios there's the latest gfs guidance does have a, a little bit of a stronger ridge in place but it also actually kind of speeds up the storm as well i mean there's significant differences in the extended range between the global guidances right now with this storm because the ultimate you know the european has it actually slowing down and the gfs continues to keep that same speed 14 16 18 miles an hour and even and even picks up speed as it gets closer so here's the ensembles what we have right now on the overall european guidance and i do tell you i've been following this even on the ensembles yeah most of them have been taking it out to sea but even in the ensembles actually have been getting it creeping it a little bit closer right creeping it a little bit closer so yes once you get beyond seven days it's likely going to be right here right seven days from now there's no question on all the guidances the uncertainty is is where that turn's going to be and then the speed of the system the, the strength of the trough and the strength of the ridge is going to be over the top and that is definitely the differences right now the gfs is a little bit a little bit more spread out with its ensembles uh, but they kind of like elongate in the same same area but you know don't take your guard down there's still there's still scenarios here because we're still talking you know seven to ten days out and even could be beyond uh 10 days this is a long track storm we've got a long time to track this particular system but nonetheless it is going to be definitely a formidable storm and something to look out for because yeah it's going to be peaking at you know likely a category five hurricane and we've got plenty of time to track this system because going into day 10 we've you know the latest even the latest european guidance has it actually ticking a little bit closer right just a tad bit closer than the last 12 hours and the, the 12 hours before that so the trend is still taking it out to sea but the trend is definitely extending it a little bit closer to the united states with the deepening ridge a much a little bit a little bit stronger ridge and a little bit less intensity in the trough so this is day this is actually day 10 on the gfs and actually again the the movement i mean look at the differences i mean it's got it off the coast of the carolinas and this is basically hitting maine so that's a big spread in the global guidances right now and depends on the speed of the system so that's the spread literally from the carolinas all the way up to maine to nova scotia definitely still needs to be on high alert from this system because it's still basically off, off an African coast and it's got seven days just to get to north of Puerto Rico. So we got plenty of time to track this system and watch the trend as it unfolds. But it's definitely a storm that you need to watch closely for sure. Here's the pressures as we head into that, say, day 10. This is again, this is a long ways out. This is September 15th. Pretty much has it off the coast of the Carolinas, uh, several hundred miles offshore. And yes, the, the GFS is definitely much further north and extends it actually into Maine and into Nova Scotia on, on, you know, on the latest run. But most ensembles actually take it out to sea, but the trend is trending a little bit closer to the United States. And it's just one of those, one of those things beyond the day seven, it's just kind of too far out right now to say 100% certainty is going to just go out to sea. So you can't 100% just write off this storm and it's something that you don't have to pay attention to. You do have to pay attention to it and you just need to keep on high alert if you live anywhere from the Carolinas to, to Maine and I'll be keeping you updated, you know, on the track of this particular system. But yes, the real deal is heading into the next week with the, the cooler air, right? I mean, with with the ridge backing off into mexico you've got the overall final five days from monday to friday the work week for next week you've got average to below average you know conditions with these multiple fronts trending further south and you've got wetter conditions right so with these multiple fronts it's going to kick off some showers and storms and obviously keep them on the cooler side with cloudier and rainier conditions so 
this is a definitely welcome sign to see green on the map and these are above average rains folks in kansas and oklahoma good part of the panhandle of texas north texas even central texas even south texas right i mean you're going to get some beneficial rains heading in the next week and that extends a really a kind of elongated on these series of fronts and then heavier rains even on the first half of the week and but then even on the second half of the work week for for the northeast and there would be the track and the heavier rains through day 10 uh from from overall lees so guys i appreciate you guys watching if you like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update fire protect you for and after storm